robot uh, uh, has a device for uh, fertilizing. Uh, the main uh, idea is uh, to use this uh, to use uh, this conveyor belt so that we can open this gate uh, at the right time uh, and uh, fertilize uh, the plants. Uh, the gate uh, should be opened uh, at the right angle. Uh, the angle is depending on the color of the fruit. Uh, this sensor tells us uh, if there's a fruit uh, underneath, and uh, uh, it uh, should be uh, synchronized so that uh, when the fruit is detected, uh, the, the vehicle will go uh, a certain amount of uh, Length, uh, so it will be right under the uh, the apparatus. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, it is. Um, we have uh, two bricks here, and uh, they are connected by Bluetooth. So the main one is the the one that is on top, and uh, it is controlling the the sonar sensors and the motors and the light sensor. So we will use the second one <coughs> to, to avoid obstacles by hitting by this touch sensor. But this is not working properly. It is uh, well connected, but uh, no, the parameters are not uh, receiving well. So we will try to fix that and that's it. Uh, we, also, the main brick is uh, uh, it's, uh, turning this to, to fit the, the melons. And uh, we, will re we will recognize that <coughs> with the light sensor. Also, uh, if we are capable of uh, um, communicate well, we will we will uh, move the light sensor some range to detect some melons because uh, we are going to detect the first one, make the range, and then go back to not touch any one of them, or it is supposed to. So at the first time, we will uh, start the program, and the program is waiting for the connection of the other brick. So it is showing the screen that it's waiting. Wow. <laughs> Very good job. So uh, the philosophy would be like uh, it goes to the road and it has this sensor. And when this detects green, it turns and goes to green. And uh, when he is inside green, it's looking for watermelons. Uh, it has this uh, for uh, not falling down. And these are always working. So when he is on the green, if it's not falling down, it's looking for uh, watermelons. And uh, we had these for the rice. And uh, in order to feed more the blue, the blue watermelons, it would uh, stay more time down. And um, we also had the uh, one to, to have a, a sound sensor, but we didn't have uh, inputs and it would be very complicated to do the Bluetooth, we didn't have the time. So it starts with human touch, it's more uh, reliable. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it. Um, when he's on grass, first thing is that he's not falling. Second, to see with this uh, detector if it's white or blue. If it's blue, it's, this one stays more time down to give more rise. If it's white, it just goes down a little bit to give a little rise. But it always stops. And then, again, looking for watermelons. Okay, bye. It's uh, auto killer. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we have, we have an ultrasonic sensor to know if there is a cliff or not, and touch sensor to know if there is a wall. And uh, so, thanks to that, we, we don't drive on the watermelon. Okay. That is, I think it's a good thing. And here we have a light, oops, light sensor. And uh, thanks to the light sensor, we can know if there is a blue watermelon or a white watermelon. And it's not ready yet, but here we have uh, motors 
and uh, thanks to that, we can put rice, um, rice on the watermelon. Okay, so thanks a lot. that your, your robot left the models intact, never work on them, and we just want to count them and fertilize them, mm -hmm. the blue or the white manner. Mm -hmm. That's the philosophy of our, uh, of our robot. And what is the trial that you would like to do now? How are you going to work? What are you going to do? So I put my uh, robot here, and I hope that we'll count the melons which are on the grass. Okay. And you are not going to apply fertilizer today? No. Okay. So you can tell us if one fruit has fallen into the view of the sensor. You say one, <coughs> two, and then we can have more or less an idea of how many fruits they were okay. there. Okay? Okay. So well done. <laughs> to detect the color of the balls. So the strategy, the strategy to follow the line is like going in zigzag. And um, we, uh, we put as well this, this bump, bumper sensor uh, because we need uh, to detect balls when, uh, when he is uh, turning. And uh, the most important thing today is about the yeah, um, we did this pipe and um, we put rice with a like uh, how can I say uh, like a piece. There is a wheel inside the tube with holes uh, on, on it. Oh, I see that there is a, an axis here. So yeah, yeah. yeah so, so this is moving. Yeah, wonder and. Uh, when the motor is rolling, the, um, the piece is rolling with a, with a stick. And uh, because if, if you don't move, uh, well, uh, sometimes the rice is blocking the, the, ah, the system. Yeah, the holes of the piece. So we put a stick as well to move so with the, yeah, the rice can be through the holes. And uh, this part of the pipe, is moving as well with the arm to to can to can feed the most uh, the further uh, watermelons. Can I, can I can I ask why do you have this ultrasound uh, in this position? Yeah, we have to, uh, we when we are um, running through the grass line, um, we are detecting uh, when suddenly the distance is di different because it's. it's it should be a watermelon. So we move the, the arm to this distance to, to know if it's, real, it's a real watermelon and detect the color. Thank you. We are, we are going to present to you our idea. As a team of companies, the simple is the best. And we try to implement that in our product. So I think that we have a very, very simple so we have a mechanism which is uh, simple but effective and efficient in the same time. So we just used a wheel and a part of a bottle. Our idea, basic idea, is to go along the grass line so that we don't smash the fruits. Uh, we had to make an assumption. Uh, this assumption cons con uh, consists of the, the fact that um, white watermelons are the major ones and blue wat light blue watermelons are those who need fertilization. Um, that's something that we had discussed uh, with the professor yesterday. Um, okay, so one, one more assumption but uh, also something that it's uh, reasonable is that the 
the fertilization should be not on the plant but beside the plant because it must reach the roots. available place. Unfortunately, this algorithm currently doesn't work. So we decided that our robot will... Uh, now it goes only straight, sorry. But we will try to do this uh, for tomorrow, I think. So the idea is to go straight? And yeah, see it's, it's now, it's now, but it's not a correct idea. The main idea is to cover all available places so he can go everything. No, everything like here, here, and then go there, something like this. Another idea was to uh, control robot by the power of voice. Uh, different powers, different movements, but we uh, don't uh, made it correctly, so it listens uh, not every time. You know, and now I can now, what's show... What's the idea of fertilizing? How is the culture? Uh, fertilizing, we use a uh, certain water to move this and it will open this can and the uh, seeds will go through this special tube to the ground. Okay, yeah, so there is a can hole show, there. Yeah, special hole and it's like that. Here is the rabbit, so like uh, he's a rabbit, so he can only be on the grass, so over there on the fence floor. So you can see here moustache, nose, ears, there's also the back. So we are trying to, new, to, to use a natural fertilization. From the back, I let you guess what will be the fertilization. So here is going to be there. We are going to try. So more uh, technical aspects. It has uh, the light sensors. We can uh, uh, calibrate them because the light is always changing. So at the beginning, I will have to calibrate the sensor so that the rabbit can see the watermelon. Normally, we can make the difference between the blue and the white watermelon, we can't count it. We will see. So then, uh, we tried, we finally choose to use only one microcontroller because we don't need, we don't need one, uh, we have enough sensors. We have less than four sensors, so one is enough. Yeah. So, How does the dozer work? Dozer. So we choose, we chose the most, the easiest way. So it's only a hole in the glass, and like that. That's all. So we're going to try on the third floor. And now you prepare to, to fertilize differently balls, white balls and blue balls. Normally, he prefers the white balls. So it is going to make. A bigger, uh, more than the blue balls. Okay, it's a first, a first approach. It was very impressive, very beautiful. on board the robot. Uh, we can see that almost every group has accomplished this task. The second task uh, is that the dozer has to work in a kind of efficient way. So it has to put over the grass or over the, mm, over the watermelons a different quantity of fertilizer depending on the color. So if it faces a blue uh, watermelon, it has to put a different quantity of rice than if it were facing uh, a white watermelon. Some groups have accomplished that task, uh, some others not, it's okay. The third question 
uh, they have to answer if the robot uh, include any kind of uh, organization of work. That means if they can feed the watermelons at a different time uh, than if they are walking, or if they can do both tasks at the same time. Uh, we can see that almost every robot has accomplished a task. The fourth question is if the, they can apply fertilizer over the plants. Uh, it means that if they are able to put the fertilizer, the rice, over the different watermelons, or just if they can spread the rice more or less around the watermelon. Uh, we can see that almost only two groups have accomplished a task, groups number one and two, and about the last uh, task of today, if uh, they can see the difference on the floor, uh, meaning that if they can somehow distinguish between uh, those blue and white watermelons, so they can put different doses. So it's more or less uh, the same as the second question. And well, almost none of the none of the groups, none of the participants have been able to fill, to fulfill the task. But well, uh, we are quite happy. They have worked uh, quite efficiently. And well, I guess that uh, they deserve a clap from everybody. So.